Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in segmentary series. If you are new, this is a new series that we have started in which we are trying to dissect segment trees from scratch. In the previous 10 videos, we have discussed about how to build segment trees, how to do point updates and range queries. And then we have discussed the complexity analysis of each of these methods along with their proofs and the entire code walkthrough. We solved problems of various difficulties after that on segment trees and then we looked at how segment tree structure is very similar to how binary search proceeds. So we looked at how to do binary search directly using segment trees and in the past couple of videos we looked at uh, some problems of must sort trees. So we have maintained a sheet in which we have the, all the topics along with uh, various problem for you to practice. If you are new to segment trees or if you are an intermediate segment tree uh, solver, I would encourage you to go through those problems and I'm very sure if you go through this problem, you will learn something new and able to strengthen your understanding of segment trees. In this particular video, we'll be looking at mkth num. We'll be solving this particular problem of swatch. Uh, it's very interesting problem and I would not be iterating over the merge sort tree concept. I assume that you already know about that. If you don't, I would encourage you to watch this video uh, where we have explained why merge sort tree ex exists and what it is. So with that, let's get started. Let's start with a brief recap of uh, uh, the merge sort tree itself. If you remember, this is how a usual segment tree would look like. You have the actual elements in the array in the leaf of the tree and then in each of the non-leaf node you will have some property based on the children. So in this in this particular example we have uh, maintained the sum across the children. So we, we have maintained 1 plus 4, 5, 2 plus 1, 3 and so on and so forth. Now the issue with this structure is we know that there is an 8 but we don't know which all element contributed to this 8. So there are various possible ways to get 8. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 and so on. But we don't know what exactly was there which contributed 8. So we don't know the underlying elements. And that's exactly where merge sort tree helps to rescue. The structure of merge sort tree is very straightforward. Instead of maintaining a single property, you maintain the entire array itself. So in this particular example, you can see instead of maintaining 1 plus 4 or any property of children, we maintain 1 and 4 itself. Similarly, 2 and 1 itself. And then at this node, at this node we maintain 1, 4, 2, 1. They're basically all the elements uh, that exist in this particular range. So with this structure, the advantage is you get all the elements. And now if you want to query something which is actually based on the elements themselves, you are now able to do so. Again, this was just a very quick recap. If you don't follow this, I would strongly encourage you to watch the previous video in which we have discussed in deep about why must sort tree exists and what it is. So let's uh, start with the problem for today. The problem is mkth num. The problem statement is very straightforward. The This is where th the pr actual problem starts. You are given an array of size n and you have to answer q queries each query will be of the form i, j, k. The query answer would be what would be the kth number in i to j segment if the segment was sorted, right? So let's take an example. Let's say the array is 15236374. Now the query is 253. It means you have to answer what is the third largest element if the range 225 is sorted. So what 225 contains, this is 225, 2345, 5263. If this range was sorted, what is the third largest element in this range? So if you sort this range, you will get 2356. And the third largest element in this range would be 5, right? The 5 is the third largest element in the, when this range is sorted. And hence the answer for this particular query would be 5. So hope the problem statement is clear. Uh, again, uh, uh, just to get to the constraint, uh, they themselves have given that a naive solution will not work. So it doesn't matter if you want to apply naive solution. 
there are various solutions to this problem. Uh, we will be particularly looking at the merge sort tree solution uh, because it can. This problem can be solved very easily using persistent segment trees or any other offline data structure as well. Why offline? Again, because all the queries are given to you in advance. If the queries were not given to you in advance, any offline data structure like smooth algorithm or anything like that would not work. So let's start again. Uh, I would not encourage you to think in terms of this problem is of the must sort tree, but rather opposite. As I always say, these algorithms are the tools in your toolbox. You should know that they exist and they solve certain class of problem. And given the problem at hand, you should be able to convert that to a standard problem which you know how to solve using your toolbox. So given this array, we need to find out what is the kth largest element in the range L to R or I to J. So let's say this is your query. So in this case, you have to answer what is the second largest element in the range 2 to 6. So this is the range 2 to 6, right? Uh, you have to sort this range first of all and then answer the second largest number. So we are not discussing the brute force solution but the brute force solution would simply be just sort this range and get the second largest element. So that would take order and log and log in time for a single query and that will surely not pass uh, the given time constraint, right? So we need something better. Now notice that we want an online solution here. We are not care. We, we don't. We do not care about any offline solutions because that is out of the picture. Now, if you are, if you want an online solution and you know that you have to query something in a range L to R, then you have to use some kind of range query data structure. That part is clear. Now, in this particular problem, in this range L to R, you don't like you need to have the entire context of what all elements exist because you want the second largest element or the kth largest element. So you need to have the context as well. So the data structure that will help you main keep the context is merge sort tree. Uh, in future, we'll discuss about persistent segment tree as well that also help you keep the context in some way. But for now, as we have, as we know only about merge sort tree, that is the thing that should come to our mind. Now, let's just quickly build merge sort tree over this. So let's say you build a uh, merge sort tree structure over this array and now you have to answer the query 262. Basically, give me what is the second largest element in the range 226. So as we know, this is like any other segment tree and if you are querying a range 226, you will be getting log n number of ranges. Now, uh, in this particular case, you will be getting this range, this range, and this range, right? So you are getting, you will be getting log n such ranges. Now, why log n? If you don't understand why log n, I would encourage you to watch the very first video in the series where we, have, where we have discussed the proof of the query L2R. So we are querying the range 2 to 6 and uh, we know we will be getting log n number of ranges. Now, what we want? We want second largest element across this log n arrays. So we have log n arrays and we want second largest element across these arrays when these arrays are sorted or when these arrays are combi combined and sorted, right? So our new problem now is you are given some arrays, right? And we need to find out the kth largest element when we, when all of these arrays are combined and sorted, right? Again, to reiterate, we have, uh, let's assume that we have T number of arrays. Each array is of size n. Again, this array are different sizes, but let's say the maximum size of this array, maximum size of any array in this uh, list of arrays is n. And we have to find out the kth largest. So these things I'm taking just to make sure that we are able to analyze the time complexity. Now, what would be what would be the solution of this? Like this problem is uh, not related to any kind of segmentary or any other advantages such as this is very straightforward algorithmic problem. So I would encourage you to pause and try to think of the solution by yourself. So hope you thought about it. The problem is 
we need to find the kth largest when all of these are merged right so instead of finding out this in a unsorted array in a list of unsorted arrays let's say we sort these arrays right we will look at how to uh, how to solve it on an unsorted array but let's say uh, we want to simplify it and we have sorted all of these arrays now we need to find out the same thing on the list of sorted arrays so one possible what is the brute force solution first of all the brute force solution would be to just combine everything right combine everything sort it and give the kth largest element right now what would be the time complexity of this algorithm first of all you will combine everything so let's say each array is of size n so you will be having an array of size n into t right now this is the total size of the combined array and you have to sort it as well so let's say you sort it and you will be getting a complexity of nt into log nt right now this solution is very bad because it has a factor of n we want a solution that doesn't have a factor of n that is our goal why we are okay with t because if you think about it t is the number of arrays and we have already discussed that number of arrays would be log n right we are querying a range right so querying a range would give us log n number of arrays so we are okay having t in our uh, complexity but we are not okay having n so this solution is very bad now what can like how to improve this again very straightforward i would encourage you to strongly i would strongly encourage you to pause and at least try to optimize this particular solution by yourself right so think about it we need kth largest element and we need to one way is to merge all these arrays so we are able to merge this array in naive way in n into t into log nt what other ways you can merge the arrays one of the way could be just because all of these arrays are sorted you can simply maintain a heap and keep on merging the arrays based on the heap so for what does it mean it means that you know that the first element in your final array would be one of these four elements right so what you will do you will just take min of uh, all of these and that will be the first element in your final array right so you are building your final array and this will be the first element in that final array now let's say you uh you you have figured out that this is this was the first element so you incremented it because you have consumed this one now again you will take minimum across all of this minimum let's say is again one so you take this is the second element in your array again uh, same uh, same approach because you have consumed this this is your new element in consideration and you will be taking again minimum across all of this right so you will be getting one again right and then you will do the same thing for this as well you will increment this and again taking minimum and so on and so forth so you will keep on doing this and you this array will ultimately be filled now notice that what you are what you want you want minimum across some set of elements so and you want to remove the minimum and this can be easily done using a heap so what exactly will be the time complexity basically in they you will be maintaining a heap of size t right basically the size size of the heap would be exactly equals to the number of arrays that you have so this heap will be of size t in each iteration you are finding out the minimum element in the heap that will require order one time right and then you are finding out you are re removing the minimum element and then inserting one new element so removing and inserting both will take log n time so in total in one iteration you are doing log n operations or log t operation to be precise you are doing log t operations now how many times will you be doing this basically number of elements that you have so n into t into log t right this many number of elements you have so you will be doing this this many number of times and in this complexity you will be able to merge all of the array so you have reduced the complexity slightly not very much but slightly you have achieved a complexity of n into t into log t right now even this is bad but now you can see that okay i don't need to 
query or like I don't need to keep the entire array with me. I can just stop at the kth position, right? So basically instead of going all the way up to NT, I can just go up to K because I just want kth largest element. So whenever I am at the kth index and I got the answer, I will stop the process there. So the complexity, the new complexity now is k log t, which is definitely better than the original one, but still it is, it is not something that we want because it also has a factor of n. Basically the val the worst case value of n would, the worst case value of k would be n, right? So because it also has a factor of n multiplied, this is also something we can't afford. We need to optimize this as well. Now, how to optimize this? This part is interesting. Notice that each of these arrays are sorted, right? Or, or first of all, notice that we, we want to remove this K or N in general from the given time complexity. So basically there is no solution at all in which we can iterate over the K elements, right? So we need to somehow think of a way where this k or n would come in the log factor but would not come in this one right so basically our solution would have something like log n but we are not sorting anything right so only thing that can come here would be binary search right so you can do binary search over answer so what you can say okay instead of uh, finding out or merging the entire thing and then finding out the kth largest, I will say, I will binary search for the kth largest element. So let's, for this problem, let's assume that the element could be anything between zero and 10, right? So element in this array could be anything between zero and 10, um, but it can be anything, but for this problem, let's assume this. So what you will do, you will just do a binary search in the range zero to 10. So you will first go, you will hit at some M, you will check how many elements are there which are less than M? Let's say that comes out to be X. There are X elements which are less than M. So there can be three possible cases, right? X is less than K. X is equals to K. And X is greater than K, right? So what does these three cases means? It means that Let's, let's see the first one, X is less than K. It means that the number of elements that is smaller than M is X and that number of elements is less than K. So we want the Kth largest. So it means Kth largest would exist in this range, right? Again, just to reiterate this part, we know that number of, what is X? X is the number of elements which are smaller than K in across all these arrays, right? Now we know number of elements which are smaller than M. So if uh, X is less than K, it means we have less number of elements which are smaller than K, which in turn means that if you fill this array, M will be somewhere here and you want kth largest. So kth largest would definitely be greater than M, right? So you will only search in the right half, right? And similarly, if uh, let's say X is greater than K, it means number of elements which are smaller than M is greater than K. In other words, M would lie somewhere here, right? So basically the element you are looking for is less than M itself. So you can only search in the left half and completely ignore the right half. I hope you can see the binary search thing here. Basically, if you don't know about, if you don't know about binary search, I would strongly encourage you to watch one, one another video that I recorded using binary search itself. Basically, we just need to make sure that if uh, we are able to deterministically say that we can skip the left half or the right half, if this condition is satisfied, then we can apply binary search. So in this particular case, the condition is satisfied. Based on whether X is less than K or greater than K, we can deterministically say whether to search in the left half or the right half. And because of this, we can say that binary search is applicable here. We can do binary search on the answer. Now, let's just take an example to make entire thing much more clear. Let's say uh, K in this case 
is uh, 11 right so we, we, we want 11th largest element and as we have as we have mentioned that let's assume that everything is in between 0 and 10 right so 0 is the maximum element in this array across all these arrays and 10 is the sorry 0 is the minimum element across all these arrays and 10 is the maximum element across all these arrays now uh, we will do binary search over the result so the middle element is 5 right so what we will say okay how many elements are there which are less than 5 so let's count how many elements are there which are less than 5 in this array 3 right again how many elements are there less than 5 in this array uh, 1 2 3 4 5 so 3 5 and then less than 5 no element and then less than 5 all the elements are less than 5 so 5 so number of elements which are less than 5 is 3 plus 5 plus 5 which is 13 so 13 elements are there which are less than 5 so is 13 greater than 11 answer is yes because 13 is greater than 11 it means if you start filling the array 5 would come somewhere here and you want this kth element so basically whatever you are looking for is less than equals to 5 so you can search directly in this half right so again uh, we will do the same thing let's just uh, ignore this part now and uh, we will just say okay what is the middle element let's assume that it is 2 right now you will do the same thing how many elements are there which are less than 2 uh, let's just erase all of these number of elements less than 2 is or less than equals to 2 let's say is 3 number of elements less than equals to 3 equals to 2 is 3 less than equals to 2 is 2 so 3 plus 2 plus 2 3 plus 3 plus 2 which is 8 8 is not less than 11 it means if you fill this entire thing 2 will come somewhere here um, 2 will come somewhere here and you want kth largest element so basically your kth largest element would be greater than 2 so you will skip the left half now and you will now search in the range 3 to 5 right again uh, just uh, last part uh, the middle element would be 4 you will again search for 4 and uh, let's just uh, search for 4 as well how many elements are less than 4 uh, less than equals to 4 4 less than equals to 4 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 less than equals to 4 is 4 uh, or 5 5 plus 5 plus 4 14 14 is again uh, greater than 11 so it will be somewhere in the left half so basically you will be searching in the range 3 to 3 or in other words because there is only one element you can say the kth largest element is 3 and if you just sort this entire if you just merge everything sort this you will see the 11th largest element is indeed 3 right so this is the entire algorithm now what is the time complexity that is what is important so what let's say the range or the largest element is e let's assume that the smallest element is 0 and the largest element is e so you are doing binary search so you will be iterating over log e number of scenarios now in each of these scenarios what you are querying you are querying for how many elements are there which are less than equals to some m right so we want to find how many elements are there which are less than equals to some m so what you are doing you will be iterating over each of these array one by one and for each of these array can you find out how many elements are there which are less than m answer is yes because the array is sorted you can simply do binary search right let's say you have to find out number of elements which is less than equals to 4 you can simply do binary search for 4 you will get here or you will get this index you can simply say okay if this index is 3 it means 4 elements are there which are less than equals to 4 right so basically in each of these array you are doing binary search so how many arrays are there t and in each of these array you are doing binary search which will take log n time right so this is the time complexity of finding out how many elements are there which are less than equals to m and you are doing this log e number of times so in total the time complexity is log e into t into log n and notice that this is definitely better than any of these and also notice that there is no n factor involved at all all the n factors are somewhere in the log logarithmic section which will which is accepted 
right? So this is the overall time complexity and this will give pass the given time constraint because t is log n. How t is log n? Again, just reiterated that part. We will be having log n number of arrays because we are querying the range L to R and any range L to R in a segment tree would give you log n number of independent ranges, right? So let's look at the entire problem again. Uh, notice what we have to do. We, in, if you remember, initially the array was unsorted. We have solved the problem on a sorted array with this complexity. If the array would not have been sorted, we couldn't have applied binary search here at all. And this log n factor would become an order n factor. So this sorting is something which is required. So we have to do two things, right? First, we have to uh, figure out, uh, first we have to sort each of the array. And second, we have to figure out how many elements are there which are greater than k or less than k based on how you uh, look at the binary search uh, uh, constraints or binary search uh, uh, conditions. So we we have this uh, merge sortery. We have to first do sorting and then we have to figure out how to find out the number of elements which are greater than k in each of uh, in in a particular range L to R, right? So Let's so see the first one. The first one is very straightforward. What you can do, you can simply sort each of these arrays, right? And that should be fine. Why it should be fine? Or what is the overall time complexity you are uh, uh, incurring with the sorting? It is no none of like it is none greater than order L login. Why we have explained this in the previous video where we have discussed about. Uh, two problems of the spot, which uh, is k query and another uh, one problem, I think, uh, giveaway. So I would encourage you to watch that. But just to give you an idea again, we are sorting this arrays, right? So what exactly each of these level are? Each of these level is a independent or is a collection of independent sub arrays. So you can see this second level contains two sub arrays of the original array 0 to 7 and similarly third level contains four sub array of the original array 0 to 7 and finally the last sub array contains eight uh, last level contains eight sub arrays of the original sub array of the original array 0 to 7 so basically you are sorting everything here let's say there is n1 number of elements here and let's say there is n2 number of elements here so if you are sorting this what is the complexity you are getting n1 log n1 right and similarly, n2 log n2, this is the complexity you are getting, right? Now, notice that n1 is, or what is the overall complexity like for a single level? Single level n1 log n1 plus n2 log n2. Now, notice that log of n1 or n1 itself is less than n, right? Basically, n is the total size of the array. So, n1 is less than n because it is a subset. So, we can simply remove this n2 with n and this n2 sorry we can simply re replace this n1 with n and simply replace this n2 with n as well this will not decrease the complexity but rather increase the complexity so whatever complexity we will get after replacing this n1 and n2 with n is something which will be greater than the original complexity that we will having right so now if you just sum them up it will be coming n1 plus n2 log n which in turn means n log n so at the second level, you are incurring a cost of n log n, right? And if you apply the same algorithm at each of these level, let's say n1, n2, n3, n4, n1 log n1, n2 log n2, n3 log n3, n4 log n3. Now replace all the things in the log with n because again, the same, uh, same reasoning log of n1 would be great, smaller than log of n. So you, if you replace log of n1 with log of n and whatever time complexity you will get after that, it will be smaller than, uh, it will be greater than what you will have gotten if you just sum log n1 log n1 plus n2 log n2 plus n3 log n3 and so on. So basically at this level as well, you will be getting n log n overall, right? And similarly at the last level as well, you'll be getting the same thing. So at each level you are getting n log n and how many levels are there? Log n number of levels because the height of the tree segment tree is log n. So overall complexity would be n log square n, which is fine, which is which will pass the given time constraint because n is just 10 to the power 5. So sorting 
or so this particular thing will take uh, n log square n now there is a very straightforward approach in which we can uh, optimize this n log square into order n log n which we have discussed again in the past video uh, i would encourage you to check that out for that particular optimization but uh, for now this n log square n is also okay we are happy with that now we need to we, now we we have sorted this arrays now if you look at okay uh, query the second largest element in the range 2 to 6 you will be getting log n number of sorted arrays right so in this particular case you will be getting these three arrays or in general you will be getting log n number of sorted arrays so in other words we have reached this set of arrays now so from this set of arrays what was the algorithm algorithm was just simply i so simply do binary search over the result and for each uh, iteration you will need how many elements are there which are less than m across all these arrays right so the problem that is remaining now is we need to somehow figure out the number of elements which are greater than or smaller than k across each of these arrays right so how to find out that this problem is exactly similar to the problem that we have solved in the last uh, video which is finding out the number of elements which are greater than k in the range l to r right so if you haven't watched that i would encourage you to watch that video and understand the entire picture here let's just give a brief overview you are getting this log n number of arrays and you want number of elements greater than k so what you will what you can do is you can go to each of these arrays and just do a binary search for the number of elements greater than k so let's just take one uh, one full example to uh, get this clear we we will be querying for 2 to 6 so you will say okay i will go left because uh, 0 to 7 is not overlapping with 2 to 6 completely so i will go both left and right now for left uh, i will say okay it is not overlapping so i will again go left and right now if i go left this is completely outside of the range 2 to, 2 to 6 so i will just return 0 from here uh, this 0 means number of elements that is greater than k in 0 to 1 is 0 right which is okay which is true now in this case you will say okay uh, this 2 to 3 is completely overlapping so i will just do binary search over this array and now again because this array is sorted that's why we are able to apply binary search so if you do binary search for k uh, which in this case is 2 let's assume so you will just return 1 from here or 2 from here depending on uh, Oh, sorry, one or zero, depending on how whether to include k or not. And in the same fashion, you will keep on doing this, and you will finally get the number of elements greater than k across all the log n number of arrays, right? So this part you are able to do this in log square n time. Uh, why log square n? Because notice that you will be having log n number of arrays, right? And in each log n number of arrays you will be doing binary search for k so basically log n arrays and each array you are doing binary search so again log n so log square n so number of elements which is greater than k you are able to figure out in log square n time right so what is the overall time complexity no, uh, if you remember this figuring out how many elements are there which is greater than k is just one one piece another piece was to actually do a binary search over the result right so this log e will also come so a given query complexity would be log square n into log of e where e is the maximum number of elements that is there uh, that can be possible in your array so this is the overall time complexity for a single query so just to make this entire thing a bit more concrete let's just uh, go through one quick example uh, before concluding this video so we will be going or we will be solving for this same example 226 and for this particular example we will assume that the value of e is just 4 so basically the minimum value can be 0 and the maximum value can be 4 right so we will be doing binary search over this to get the answer so let's start we have to figure out the number of the second largest element right so this is the value of k so what we will do we will simply do binary search over the result 0 to 4 so middle element is 2 right so we will say okay how many elements are there which are 
so it is denoted by m so which are less than equals to m or which are greater than equals to m uh, in the range 2 to 6 right so how will you find out that uh, let's do this again uh, 2 to 6 uh, you will do binaries you will do the usual query structure in segmentary and you will go to the left and right from 0 to 7 because it doesn't overlap with 2 to 6 again from here you will go left and right now from here you will say okay I will not return anything I will return 0 here because this range is completely outside of the range 2 to 6 now 2 to 3 is completely overlapping with the range 2 to 6 so I would be simply doing the operation on this array now what is the operation we need to find out the number of elements which are less than k uh, which are less than m so less than m is uh, m is 2 so number of elements are less than equals to m is 2 so we'll just simply return 2 from here right and uh, from here we'll return 2 plus 0 which is 2 now if you go right again same thing you will go left and right both because 4 comma 7 doesn't overlap with 2 comma 6 again 4 comma 5 is completely overlapping with 2 comma 6 so you will be simply doing your search over this array again a number of elements which are less than equals to 2 so you will be returning 1 from here right and uh, in this particular case again 6 comma 7 doesn't overlap completely so you will go both left and right uh, from the right you will return 0 because 7, 7 comma 7 is completely outside of the range 2 comma 6 from the left you will be returning 1 because number of uh, number of elements which is less than equals to 2 is 1 so from this you will be returning 1 plus 0 which is 1 and finally from this you will be returning two, 1 plus 1 which is 2 and finally from this you will be returning 4 so basically number of elements which are less than equals to 2 is 4 so you have four elements which are less than equal to two and you want the second largest element so basically whatever you are looking for lies between zero and two right so you can simply ignore this four now and you will uh, start your search between zero and two so again uh, you will go to the middle element which is one right so this is your new m you will do the same thing again for m so number of elements is less than equals to 1 so I am not iterating over this entire process again we will be getting these three arrays at the end so let's just uh, do a binary search over these three arrays so number of elements less than equals to 1 is 1 so we are getting 1 from here less than equals to 1 is 0 less than equals to 1 is 1 so basically we are getting two elements which are less than equals to 1 so and k is also 2 it means whatever we are looking for lies between 0 and 1 right so we can simply skip the two part and now we will be searching in the range 0 to 1 so either 0 will be the answer or 1 will be the answer so let's just uh, straight with uh, let us just start with 0 let's say 0 is the middle element now so again you will do the same thing number of elements is less than equals to m so in this case you will be getting 0 here you will be getting 0 and here you will be getting 1 so basically number of elements which get less than equals to m is 1 and k is 2 which is less than uh, which is so 1 is less than 2 it means uh, whatever you are looking for is greater than m so only one element remains which is 1 so answer for this query would be 1 so let's just quickly verify the elements in between 2 and 6 so these are the elements in between 2 and 6 and if you sort this array, sort this array 0 1 2 2 3 second element is 2 and hence our result is correct so hope the entire thing makes sense again just to reiterate the building segmentary would take order n log square n and for each query you will be taking uh, order log square n into log e uh, so in for q queries you will be taking log square a log square n into log e into q now one more thing just to give you an idea this e can simply be replaced by n as well if you do coordinate compression so what is coordinate compression you will just uh, basically there are only 10 to the power 5 distinct elements there can be only n distinct elements in the array right so you can simply uh, reorder them and such that you will assign let's say there are two elements 0 and 9 so instead of 0 and 9 you will say 0 and 1 and you will maintain a map that 1 actually denotes 9 something like that so if you do coordinate compression this e can also be reduced to n but that's just an optimization which you may or may not do uh, the given problem which is mk at num will pass before uh, without this optimization as well so let's look at the code 
the code is exactly similar to the previous problem that we have solved. So we have discussed the code in this video as well, I think uh, somewhere here. Uh, I would encourage you to go, the, go through that for the entire walkthrough. But uh, just to give you a brief, this is a segment tree class. In this, we are actually building the segment tree, which is building the merge sort tree. So how to build merge sort tree? Again, uh, the recursive fashion. We will build uh, the left part, we will build the right part, and then we will simply merge these two, right? So that's what we are doing. We are building the left part, we are building the right part, and then we are simply merging them, right? Now, after building, the merge, after building, we have to do some query, which is give me the number of elements which is greater than k or less than k in the range x to y. So again, the same thing we are doing. We are simply doing a, if the range completely overlaps, we are simply doing a upper bound uh, for figuring out how many elements are less than equals to k. And finally, in this is also exactly similar. We are just taking the arrays and inside this, we are doing a binary search where L is the minimum and R is the maximum. So this is one important thing, uh, which I think some of you might miss uh, that the problem just states that the numbers will not be exceeding into the bounding. So that's a smart way of saying that the numbers can be negative as well. So this is uh, something that you might miss. I also face one WA because of this. Uh, but anyways, uh, you will start L with this, R with this, and you will simply do binary search and uh, you will check how many elements are there which are less than equals to K or less than equals to M. If number of elements is less than equals to M is less than K, you know your answer lies in the right side. If it is greater than equals to K, you know your answer lies in the left side and you will simply update your R. So hope this entire session makes sense. If you have any doubts in any part of this video, feel free to post that in the comment section below. I would be able to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. So in the next video, uh, we will be discussing either this, uh, the weather and the query. This is again one interesting problem on merge sort tree as well. Or we can start with person segment trees. So person segment tree is very, very interesting data structure. Uh, I like I was personally waiting for this uh, um, to record this. So I think the next couple of videos will be very interesting. So with that, uh, hope you enjoy it and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.